Welcome to the first of six videos that will detail the process of creating your own cryptocurrency up to and including creating a Windows release package for your coin. Now in order to make our coin, we're going to be cloning a version of Litecoin and this version is 0.8.7.5. This was in use about four years ago and the reason we're using older code is because the newer stuff kind of accommodates a blockchain that already exists and as such it's kind of difficult to clone it completely from scratch so we're not going to do that. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's begin. The first step is going to be setting up our development environment. And since it would be a massive pain to do this on anything other than Linux, we're going to be using an Ubuntu virtual machine to do this. So for a virtual machine, you're going to need a piece of software. Uh, I'm using Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. It's probably the best there is. It's free. I recommend you get it. And in addition to this, you're going to need an Ubuntu ISO file. And an ISO is kind of like an install disk for the operating system. I will put a link in the description for you to download it. And once you have your ISO file, making the VM is really quite easy. You just hover over onto this magic new button over here, press it, give it a name. I'm going to name it Ubuntu C because of you know the other nomenclatures of my machines. And it's smart enough to know that I want to make an Ubuntu VM. Go next. Uh, memory size, you're going to want to give it usually as much as you can spare because C++ compilers are pretty memory hungry, especially if we're doing a big project like this. Uh, so I would recommend two gigabytes if you can spare it. I'm going to give mine four just for good measure. And then next, yep, we're going to create a virtual hard disk now. There's, the default format is fine, dynamically allocated. And in terms of size, uh, I'm going to go with 20 gigabytes. This might be a little overkill, but better safe than sorry. This is probably a pretty good size. I'm going to create you. And just like that, a new object pops up on your menu. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. You still need an ISO file. So the first time you try to start it up like this, it'll prompt you for an ISO file. And because my windowing is weird, it's over here. Here we are. And I'm going to go click here. And this is where you navigate to wherever you put your ISO file. I have a little folder for these things. And this is the ISO file you want. It should be named like this or very similar. Open it and start. And here is the actual window itself. And it's going to give you all these annoying messages about auto capture and what have you. It should not take too long to get into the setup phase. And if you remember, we're just going to install the operating system on the VM hard drive. So it's just like installing this on a normal hard drive, except it's virtual. And nearly done. As it makes up its mind. There we go. Yep. Okay, so we want to install Ubuntu. Download updates while installing, that is fine. Yes, you want to make this make sure this option is ticked, and don't worry, this is not referring to your actual hard drive. This is referring to the 20 gigabyte virtual hard drive. So this is the one we want, and we're gonna press install now. Yes, this is fine. Come on. There we go. You can put in your relevant time zone information if you so desire. It's not of critical importance to the development, and because this is annoying, I have to expand the window. Continue. And I'm just going to call mine Ubuntu. And because I'm not super worried about security on this, I'm just going to put make the password password. Also remember what you make your password, you're going to need it later. And log in automatically just to save myself trouble. And continue. And after this, it should start installing the operating system. It's going to take some time to do that. Uh, shouldn't take too long, but I'm going to cut the video until it's finished. And I will resume after I get to the desktop. All right. If you've gone through the entire install and let the VM restart, you will be greeted by the amazing Ubuntu desktop. Now the next step is downloading and installing all the dependencies. To do this, we're going to be using the terminal. Now this step is actually quite simple. It really just boils down to copying and pasting things. However, because it is very difficult to get two-way copy and paste work, it can be kind of annoying. That means that you're not going to be able to copy things from your host machine into the VM. In my case, I made a little cheat sheet for myself to use. 
Uh, for you guys, I'm going to make a pastebin link, which will be in the description of the video. And you can navigate to it within the VM, and from there you can get everything you will need to copy and paste. Now, these are all the dependencies that you will need. You're going to enter these in one by one. So, for example, copy, paste, enter, give it your password. And since I already installed it, it's going to give me that message. Usually, it will give you a prompt, a yes or no prompt. When it does that, just enter Y and it will download. Some of these are a little different. Don't worry about it. Just follow the on-screen prompts and you'll be okay. And once you have all of these installed, the next step is actually getting the source code itself. So I'm going to navigate to my desktop to make it a little easier on myself. And I will use this line right here to download the correct version. And it will create a little folder called Litecoin on my desktop. And this will be everything we need to make our clone, in terms of the source code anyway. And it is now done. So step one. First thing I'm going to do is rename the folder to what I'm going to call my coin. Since I have no better name, I will call it Fun Coin. I like fun. And after that, there's actually a problem we have to fix. Now because this is four years old and the dependencies have since changed, there is actually a one line in the whole project that will cause compilation to completely fail. So we're going to go fix that. Once you open up your coin folder, you're going to go to SRC, RPC raw transaction.cpp, and you're going to go to line number 242. This is line number 242. And here's what you will do to fix the problem. You will delete that, and you will delete that. Done. Yep, that was it. Okay, now that that's done, the next thing we're going to do is actually rename everything. So obviously we don't want our coin to be called Litecoin, that would just be silly. We're going to use some special lines over here to go through every file in the directory of our coin and find occurrences of the word Litecoin to replace them with our own. So here, here, here it is, here's an example of it. This is what we are finding, and this is what we are replacing it with. So you can see I've got um, different occurrences of Litecoin here to account for, and also the three-letter current co uh, currency code. So Litecoin is LTC. Mine will just be fun. And these you, you can uh, actually copy and paste all at once. So I'm going to do that after navigating into, into Funcoin, of course. And I will paste, and it will start. Should not take too long. And the last thing I'm going to need, I'm going to need to press enter, so I press enter. And there we are. Everything has been found and replaced. Now comes the fun part where we do a test compile. We're going to try and build it. Now obviously we haven't done anything to it yet. All we've done is change the names. But if this works, that means we are good to continue on. If not, well, we have no hope of completing the clone. So how you compile it is like this. You navigate to the SRC folder in your coins directory. You type in make f make file oops make file dot units and press enter. And it will start the compilation process. Now depending on how much memory you gave your VM, this can take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to cut the video and I will resume when it is done. All right, if compilation was successful, you will be greeted by something like this. Additionally, you can type ls into the src directory over here, and you should see you have a file named your coin with a d at the end of it, and that is actually the uh, command line version of your coin. If that is dead, that means compilation definitely worked. And if it definitely worked, you can go on to the rest of the tutorial. If it did not work, uh, you should really go no further until you can figure it out because you have no hope of completing the clone otherwise. Now, if you're fiddling with it and you really can't get it to work, I have actually created an export of my entire VM with all of the dependencies installed correctly that you can use. So, if, for example, if you're, watch if you're trying to follow this video and for whatever reason the dependencies have changed and it just no longer flat out works, you can use that import in order to compile and do the rest of the project. Uh, I have a Dropbox link that I'll put in the description for it. It's a 3.6 gigabyte download, so just be ready for that. And you can import it into VirtualBox quite easily by going into File, Import Appliance, and then just navigating to the download. 
Anyway, that wraps it up for this video. The next video is going to cover changing the network parameters of your coin. Until then.